Hello and welcome to Homemaking with Joy. My name is Rachel and in this video I will be making my favorite sourdough pancakes. These are what I recommend for all sourdough beginners as they're straightforward. You don't need the sourdough to leaven anything, but you get the flavor and the experience. So without further ado, let's get started. The recipe that I'm using is from Lisa Bass at Farmhouse on Boone. She's an excellent resource for all things related to sourdough. And this is one of the first recipes I tried when I was new to sourdough. And it's why I recommend it to new sourdough users as well. You don't have to use your sourdough to leaven anything. It doesn't have to be strong. It doesn't have to be whatever. It just gets you in the habit of feeding it and watching it grow and then using it and keeping your starter going. So if you're new to sourdough, make these pancakes every Saturday morning and your starter will be happy and healthy. It's Friday night as I'm filming this, so I am going to feed my starter so it's ready for the morning to make some pancakes. So I, um, I'm also in the middle of the pantry challenge, the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. And so I don't have any more all-purpose flour on hand. Usually that's what I feed my sourdough starter. But because I don't have it and I'm not going to go to the store to buy it, I'm going to use some freshly milled flour. I'm going to grab some wheat from a container. doesn't matter what kind. I usually use hard white or hard red. Grab my mock mill and um, feed my sourdough starter. I decided to grab my hard white wheat to, to feed my sourdough starter and for this part I just feed it a bunch of flour and water. When I make this recipe tomorrow morning I will need two whole cups of sourdough starter which is kind of a lot which is why I keep a big bowl of it. So I'm going to feed it a bunch of flour to make sure it rises and I have enough bulk for the morning. Now if you're new to sourdough this might be a little bit confusing but just Feed it a bunch, put it in a big bowl, and you will very quickly figure out how much you need to feed it. At this point, I can just eyeball it, and I always have enough. If I have a bunch left over tomorrow, I can, you know, make other things. It's not a big deal. So, let's get this wheat in my mill. it in and check the consistency. Some people measure this precisely. I do not. I have some water. I'm going to mix that in. Ideally it would be equal parts flour to water, but again, I don't measure. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. This is my bowl of sourdough starter ready to ferment overnight. I like to think of it as thick pancake batter. And that works just fine for me. So from here I will clean off my spoon and I like to use a silicone lid to put on top. I just make sure there's a little bit of airflow and then it will ferment on the counter and be bubbly for me in the morning. And there you have it. Your sourdough starter is fed and ready for pancakes in the morning. You won't be adding any more flour. So the entire flour substance of your pancakes will be fermented with sourdough, which makes it easier to digest and better for your family. The other ingredients that will go into these pancakes are eggs, coconut oil, honey, salt, and baking soda. So you can feel pretty good about making that for your family. I also like to set up everything that I'm going to need for the morning. I have two toddlers and so mornings can be a little bit hectic. So I will show you my whole setup here of everything that I use to make these pancakes and try to streamline it as much as possible um, because I'm also gonna try to film this in the morning. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> here is my setup. My recipe is here. That's the bowl I will mix in and the spatula I will use. That's my one cup measure, so I can take out two cups of sourdough starter. I need a quarter cup of melted coconut oil, so I have that ready. Honey, I just guesstimate. And then baking soda and salt, I will need a half teaspoon of one and one teaspoon of the other, so I just have a teaspoon there. And then my griddle, and everything should be set for me to go in the morning. See you back then. Good morning, I woke up with a cold this day and instead of my hoarse voice, I decided to voice it over. So I have my coffee and now I am ready to make some pancakes for the family. 
here is my sourdough starter. It got bubbly overnight. It did sink a bit, but it works just fine. You can see there are still plenty of bubbles on the surface. I'm going to grab my one cup measure. I need two scoops of this to make the pancakes. Unfortunately, I made a giant mess in the process, and now I'm trying to salvage it and clean it up as I uh, make these pancakes. I also have kids yelling in the background, but thankfully you can't hear that part. You may notice that I used a lot of sourdough starter and I don't have a lot left in my bowl, but that is plenty to revive it. I'll add lots of flour and water and it will be perfectly fine. The next ingredient we have going into our pancake mix is two eggs. I will mix the eggs into the batter a little bit, breaking up the yolks to make it easier to mix later. And then I will continue adding the rest of the pancake ingredients. The next ingredient I'm grabbing is some honey. I believe this recipe calls for two tablespoons of sweetener, and I really appreciate that the sweetener of choice is just honey. If you're serving this to kids under one year old, please just swap it for maple syrup. Here I have some salt to add to the recipe. I like to use Redmond Real Salt in my kitchen. Do you remember how I sat everything out that I would need last night? Well, here it is coming into play. This is the coconut oil, the bowl that I will melt the coconut oil in, and the spoon that I will need to dig the solid coconut oil out of the container. This helps me a lot instead of running all over the kitchen to get these things to make breakfast. I can stand in one spot, and my kids can talk to me, and they can bring me toys, and I can just take care of the coconut oil and the pancakes. So wait one moment, I use the microwave to melt that and now I can add it into my pancake batter. It is now time to completely combine these ingredients before adding the last one, which is the baking soda. These need to be one batter or one dough before we add the baking soda. The trickiest part is not sloshing the coconut oil back out of the bowl and incorporating the egg whites. They have given me some trouble in the past. So you'll see I'm very thorough as I'm mixing here before I reach for the baking soda. Here you can see the consistency of my pancake batter. I did notice it felt a little bit thicker, I think because I used the freshly milled flour to feed my sourdough starter last night. But I've also noticed if my sourdough starter is runnier or if it's thicker, it does affect the pancake batter. But they turn out really well every single time, so I don't worry about it too much and I don't think you should either. My tools are warmed up and ready to go. I had one child insist that he needed waffles, so we are also doing waffles today. Here is the baking soda. I'm adding this in. I am sure to sprinkle it over the top as to avoid getting any clumps in our batter. This will interact with the sourdough starter and help make the pancakes fluffier. Let's make some pancakes. You can make them as large or as small as you like. These are looking a bit mm, rustic, but they tasted delicious. I find that some of my ugliest food creations make it onto YouTube. It's like it knows that it's being filmed and does not want to cooperate. So I'm just hanging out with my husband and my kids while the pancakes cook. You should have heard the conversations that were going on at this point. They were very strange. You know, little kids think of the craziest stuff, but they were mostly insistent that they were hungry and really wanted to eat. So here I am checking the bottom of this pancake. Not the greatest flip I've ever made, but they all got eaten, I assure you. It's time to check both sides of the pancakes. Both look good and they look ready to be taken off of the griddle. One of my little ones is grabbing some forks for breakfast in the background. And yes, we are still doing Christmas jammies because they still fit and it increases the jammy rotation so I have to do laundry less often. Win, win. Check out the steam off those pancakes, yum. Now for the waffles, I add approximately two thirds of a cup of the batter 
I really just like overflowing it so I will always undershoot the batter instead of overshoot. I'll spread it out here and then close the lid. I cook them for approximately three minutes on my waffle iron, but I imagine that's different for everybody. There they are, all done, golden brown. Here's me trying really hard to get them out of the waffle iron without ripping them, because again, ugh, I'm on camera. They rip a little bit, but I'm able to pull them out, and they turned out perfectly. I've tried some other recipes, pancake recipes, and tried to just put them in the waffle iron, but they have not worked. This recipe always works in both methods. Here is the last of the batter being turned into pancakes. I believe we ended up with five semi-large pancakes and two full-size waffles from one batch of the sourdough pancake batter. Breakfast is finally done cooking. The second waffle is complete for my husband. The last pancakes are complete for me and my kids can stop saying eat, eat, eat and we can finally sit down and enjoy this delicious breakfast made from sourdough and freshly milled flour. I feel good about feeding this to my kids and they really enjoy it. We usually pair it with some real maple syrup and a tall glass of milk.